Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls. And I mentioned something in a previous video that I'm going to explain a little bit more right here. And that would be our thought forms feeling like ghosts that haunt us. Before we dive into that topic, okay, I am not addressing things that might have a mental component. If you are experiencing any sort of symptoms, please check with an expert, whether that's a, a therapist, a doctor, whatever it is that you need, make sure you check with an expert. We're just having a spiritual conversation here. So if you guys are new to my channel, first of all, thank you so much for liking, sharing, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. That way you get all the notices. There's a big reason why I'm saying that because nobody hits the notification bell. <laughs> then they come and go, well, you, you've been gone. Where have you? I haven't gone anywhere. I've been here every week. <laughs> Every week I'm here, so be sure to watch for that. But what I, I do here is I do angelic mediumship, and I will channel messages from angels as well. So one of the things, they give me lots of stuff, but one of the things that I have been given is something around how we can be our own ghost, how we can be our own haunting, all right? Now, please understand I or any other spiritual practitioner out there, we can be really tuned in and maybe we're even built for that and that's all well and good, but we are still in human bodies with a third dimensional ego consciousness. What does that mean? It means that information still has to filter through our experiences and through our lens. So everything that is presented by any spiritual practitioner is their interpretation of what is coming to them. Okay. So this is just my interpretation of the messages that they gave me. So the way I took it in was that often when people want to think that their home is haunted, that things are moving around, okay, that might be a ghost. And when I say check with an expert, go to a Ghostbuster. Do not ask me to take care of your ghost because no, girl, uh -uh. <laughs> I'm more scared than you are. I'm not doing that. <laughs> But, you know, that could be an actual entity or an energy form of some persuasion um, moving your stuff around. Okay, so there's that. But then the angels have come through and said, more often than not, someone has this shadow aspect. All humans do. All, we all have a shadow aspect that they're either trying to deny, move away from, um, or there's guilt, there's shame, there's pain, there's hatred, resentment, all these negative things that sometimes through the rejection of that, instead of processing it and understanding where that comes from, it can become its own beast, okay? It can become its own beast. And then people will try to, and see, this is something that we humans are better at than we realize. We're really good at projecting, excellent at it, right? So we will take all of these negative feelings and project them, or at least attempt to project them away from us. Let me say again, I'm not talking about certain identity disorders or feeling separated from, please check with an expert if that is going on. That could be, I, I don't know. I don't even want to put a label on it because I don't know, but that could be something else. What we're saying here is trying to push out the bad so that you could be purely in the light and that goes out into your energy field. Now it's still attached to you. So as you go around, you might feel like something is there, is heavy, trying to drag you down. And some might say, well, it's, it's this kind of dark entity or this kind of dark entity. Although that could be the case, it could also be you running and being scared of your own shadow. Like literally, <laughs> okay? So we want to be careful with this. There's a reason why I hadn't talked about this up until now. We want to be very careful with this because attachments are real. Um, yes, there are dark entities. Yes, there are thought forms that are not ours that try to infiltrate us. And yeah, that's all real. And I love when people are so shut down to that and they laugh at it. You're, you're, whatever, you're kind of making a fool out of yourself. Like you don't even know how expansive these things are and how these things might be affecting you. And instead of like looking into it and, you know, if you want to disprove it, go ahead, but do the work to disprove it. Until then, uh, don't come around here <laughs> yeah, throwing your negative opinions on this. But what can end up happening is 
we, you know, that will affect maybe your sleep, again, spiritually speaking, just a spiritual conversation we're having here. Um, it could disturb your sleep or you start to have nightmares. And it's because everything that would normally just be blended through us, we're meant to be duality consciousness beings, we're moving towards unity, but we're in this predicament, and yes, I'll call our timeline a predicament because <laughs> that's what it feels like right now, but we're in it to explore duality consciousness, right? And so there is a natural want, I think, to split out the light from the dark when density consciousness beings, us, are supposed to be embracing both. I'm telling you what, what is it, the dark crystal? Everyone laughs at me, but I swear to God, okay, go watch that. The ending it is in on something okay it's kind of profound <laughs> actually but yeah it's supposed to be a blending of the two and i always say when the light tempers the dark there can be no evil because it's not in its pure uh, polarized state anymore and with the light it's no longer just intangible and just sort of concept it brings it into something we can perceive as real so please remember, if you are trying to push away some of the negativity in you, this is why I'm like, I, I think I'm one of the only practitioners out there who openly and directly says, don't do that false positivity thing. Don't sweep things under the rug. Okay, don't do that positive vibes only because now you're even now trying to have control over other people and saying how they can feel and they're not supposed to talk about it or you have to let it go, whatever. I, it, like be here, focus on what you got to do, okay? And if you feel something just beyond your physicality, that's a splitting that you don't want to have happen, okay? If you sometimes feel like, because often, I guess it would be different for everybody. If you have this going on where it's your own thought forms creating a being that you're projecting out of you, Okay. And it's somewhere in your field. Your field can be very expansive, but often it's like really attached to you. A guardian angel is not going to be attached to you. Okay. No, no. Okay. Spirit guides, not attached to you. They're not attached to you. As a matter of fact, spirit guides and angels will not even come enter into your space without permission. Okay. Can dark entities come in? I don't study that so hard because, ew, but <laughs> no offense, no judgment to the dark community. I don't know, but I just don't want to absorb anything. I don't want the muddy foot footprints through my, my bubble. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> but, you know, even with attachments like negative entity attachments, the stuff I've seen those ha that had to be invited in as well. And that is why when you uh, practice certain things, you mess with certain things, or maybe substances, that lowers your frequency. And now you're leaving yourself open. It's like being a vacant house. And some of these entities like very much to come in and occupy that space. So there can be that as well. Of course, there's energy interference. This is often what we get with uh, lower fourth dimensional beings, or as we would see it uh, as uh, beings that didn't cross over. And they're in that, I always kind of see it as like this little sandwiched little place. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that is exactly, but they can be occupying a space. Or an object. Guys, I used to do readings for people by just picking up someone's watch and doing... I should get back to that. That's kind of cool, actually. But um, that was one of the first ways of reading and crystal readings. I did that before I did anything. But, um, you know, you, you can have that kind of energy trapped in an object. That's why if you're going to collect antiques, you need to be careful. You need to be very, very careful with that. Um, I have moved away from antiques. I mean, I have some things like I got a cool antique -y looking vase from a thrift store. If you think I wasn't over here like smoking it out and spraying rose water and like, you know, holy, 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 you know, doing the thing. <laughs> like because they can, they can be in that. That's why when you have, um, it's energy imprinting. So if you have something from like your great, great grandmother and she's passed on, 
you can almost still feel her with you when you have that object, okay? So keep that in mind. But we're talking about um, fourth dimensional beings haunting a space. Uh, it would be like you going into somebody else's house and being like, I live here now. They were like, really? Because I already done lived and died in this house in 1842. And I had to make my own butter and my own bread. And what are you doing? <laughs> like rude, right? So, you know, <laughs> that is energy distortion. But really there is the, we give off a certain frequency. And then in that, that state that they are in, they give off a certain frequency. And when those clash, it can move objects in a room. Now it can be that being that's moving the objects, but more often than not, and it, I don't know if there's a good way to tell the difference, but more often than not, the objects are moving because you two are crashing into each other. It's like two people running past a desk and the papers go flying off. You feel me? So <laughs> that's, that's something a little bit different. So if it is all of your negative thought forms uh, creating almost its own, so to speak, its own being that's still attached to you. Uh, as I was saying, you, you want to be careful with this because we don't want something that has attached to you and now you're trying to implement it into you. That's why I work with angels and archangels. Call in Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Metatron, Sandalphon, Raphael, Uriel, Shamuel, jo Jophiel, whoever you want to. Just at the end, just my little safeguard of God's purest love and light or of sources, purest love and light, whatever you want to do. That way there's no uh, pretend archangels coming in or different frequencies coming in and maybe um, bonding with your pain and presenting. When you're in a vulnerable state, if it presents as the real thing, then you'll believe it to be the real thing, right? Obviously. So uh, working with these angels and archangels, what you will most likely perceive would be the cutting away of that form. And you may get a message around that as well. The difference is, is that when you wake up the next day, the stuff that you've been avoiding comes right back up. And it's there. Now, a lot of times we think that if it's there, it's punishing us or it needs to be conquered or it needs to, it's a part of your soul's contract to come in and have human experiences. And I don't know one person who hasn't ever experienced loss or trauma. I'm not saying that's a normal human thing, but it's not something we can just escape from. We need to look at it. And even now they're coming in and saying, you know, part of this human way is to explore what happens to us energetically when something occurs like a trauma or pain, a loss, what have you. Everything's always shifting around. How do we adjust to that? And how can we get back to a space of joy, grace, beauty, harmony after such an event? You feel me? So I'm not saying that hor Please do not twist my words, okay? Please do not twist, twist my words. I am not saying that horrible things happen in this world so that we can become happier, no, okay, we're going through lessons as human beings and learning how uh, to survive around that, to come through, to process, to find a solution, okay? I hope I'm making that clear enough. So if you have more questions around this, as always, leave your comments down below. Check out all of my other videos in a playlist that is called Spiritual How Tos. And as always, just like you would hear, at those videos, leave your comments, leave your questions. I'm happy to do more of these videos. So we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.